Today we're going to look at a game that feels like a spiritual successor to ActRaiser, Dark Cloud on the PlayStation 2. Like ActRaiser, this game was released very early in its console's lifespan and combined two very different gameplay styles. The plot of Dark Cloud is very simple. Toen awakens shortly after the evil genie destroys his hometown, along with several other villages. Just before the cities were destroyed, the Spirit King encased all the homes and people within magical spheres called Atla, and grants Toen the ability to retrieve them and restore the land. After this brief introduction, there really isn't much story until the very end of the game. Character development is a little sparse as well. I generally don't care for action RPGs, but enjoyed this one quite a bit. I think my biggest problem with the genre is that I don't like AI-controlled party members. No matter how good the system is, it always seems like my teammates are more of a burden than anything else. That's not an issue here, since there is only one character on screen at all times. If you want to use one of your other party members, you can hit the select button to swap them out. This will be necessary to advance in dungeons at times because certain obstacles can only be passed by a specific character. The randomly generated dungeons can be a bit of a chore at first because you have to watch your thirst meter, repair your weapons, and of course pay attention to your hit points. If your thirst meter gets too low, your character will start losing hit points. This meter can be replenished by drinking water or by finding little pools of water within the dungeon. Each weapon you use has its own hit points called WHP. If this gets down to zero, the weapon will break and be lost forever. It's always a good idea to carry a handful of repair powders whenever you're going to explore. All of these stats can eventually be upgraded, which will make exploring much easier. The weapon system in this game is really cool. Every time you defeat an enemy, your weapon gains experience called ABS. After gaining enough, you can upgrade your weapon, which will absorb any attachments in addition to increasing its stats. Once you upgrade it to level 5, you have the option of performing a status break, which takes some of your stats and turns your weapon into an attachment that can be set on a different weapon. It's a very fun system that allows a lot of freedom for customization. Occasionally, you'll enter a special floor called a limited zone, which only allows you to have one character or makes your weapon's ABS go down. I'm not a big fan of this because it seems like you're always limited to just one character right after you acquire them, and they are generally pretty weak at that point. When you're done exploring the dungeon, it's time to take all the Atla you've acquired and restore the town bit by bit. When you talk to the people, they will let you know how they would like the town rebuilt and what they need for their home. Fulfilling these requests will usually net you something useful for your quests, so you'll definitely want to try and grant their wishes. There is a day to night cycle, but it seems like time advances way too quickly. This can be a slight annoyance when you start walking towards someone to speak to them, only to have time advance and the person has moved to a different location. The graphics aren't anything special. They're not bad, but you can definitely tell this is an early PS2 release. Most of the towns and dungeons are kind of bland, however there is some really nice detail inside of each home. There are some nice looking monsters here and there, but most are pretty average. The game has a pretty good soundtrack. One thing that did bother me about it though was how the town music was handled. You will hear a great song playing in each village, but only if you're outside during the morning or afternoon. If you wander into a home to speak to somebody, the game plays a different theme which is also nice, but the constant switching does get annoying. At night there is no music which makes the exploring a little dull. Each dungeon does have a nice theme to it though. Overall, Dark Cloud may be a little lacking in story and visuals, but the combat, weapon customization, and town building elements more than makes up for it. You should be able to snag a physical copy for less than 20 bucks, and you can also get it on PSN. 
It's a great RPG that offers something pretty unique, and I definitely recommend it. And that will do it for this one. As always, I want to thank you guys very much for watching, and I will see you next time.